Well, good evening guys, and welcome to my lab, uh, my new lab, which we are getting set up slowly. Okay, our current amplifier in solid state uh, mode. Uh, no, we have a rotor, which means we are operating in the old uh, pulse motor mode. So, um, before we go changing anything, we'll just have a little look at this to start with. Uh, you'll see the coil is um, sitting across the rotor rather than facing it. It doesn't really matter uh, which way you have the coil. It will work either like that or head on. Um, I seem to think this way is more efficient. But, uh, that would also depend on the spacing of your magnets in the rotor. This rotor of course has north-south configuration with eight magnets in total. We're drawing six volts from our power supply at 265 milliamps. Um, that of course is what's going into the positive side of our three-phase cap. This pin here is the ground which is common throughout the whole circuit and this one here pin 3 on our three phase cap is collecting the back EMF uh, ok so from cap 1 to cap 2 we have 372 milliamps at 5.89 5.9 volts so we're dropping 0.1 of a volt across the CSR in the meter uh, so that's not too bad at all the LED of course is nice and bright and I can actually see the flicker through the camera um, because at the moment we are only running on 69 to 70 Hertz ok the scope Channel A is hooked across the LED and channel B is hooked across the emitter collector. Now because of the common ground I've had to put the ground on the collector and the probe on the emitter and I have inverted the blue channel on the scope. Uh, it's a pretty stable waveform for a pulse motor. quite neat. Uh, both volt divisions, well, our voltage is set on 5 volts per division on both channels and we are on the 5 millisecond time division setting. Okay so uh, with this circuit it will work as a pulse motor or we simply stop that and it will also work as a solid state. And on solid state mode, it's a little interesting. Okay, so our current draw now is 333 milliamps at 6 volts, and our current is limited at 400 milliamps at the moment. So 6 volts at 333 milliamps going into cap 1 and from cap 1 to cap 2 which is 3 caps hooked in parallel we have 479 milliamps at 5.86 volts and of course we are in solid state mode and our LED is very bright we are now running at 118 hertz is a very low frequency so um, that would depend on how much uh, or should I say depend on the configuration of your coil this has a very large core and uses quite a large wire um, which I've specified in the thread <coughs> we can of course um, turn our pot up see the 
frequency is starting to change. 520 hertz now. <coughs> so we'll open that up a bit. And that is what we have. So what we're going to do now is we're going to crank the voltage up. 12. Okay. And our current lift to half an amp. And now we are only growing 72 milliamps. At 12 volts. And from cap 1. Cap 2, we have 204 milliamps at 11.99 volts. Uh, let's have a look here. Okay, so on channel 1, which is across the LED, we have a 17 volt peak to peak, 7.4 volts RMS and 1.8 volt means channel 2 on our means we have 11.4 volts and 13.6 volts RMS so uh, once again our LED is nice and bright now operating at 348 hertz it's a very low frequency oscillation in this circuit um, and that is basically due to the coil configuration and how much we trim our base. So I'm going to trim it up quite a bit, see if I can keep the circuit running. Now I'm using a 50k pot here and a 63 ohm resistor to the base. Okay, 646.7 Hz. And I'll just expand that a bit. We now have 29 milliamps <coughs> at our 12 volts. That's our power in. And our power out from cap. 1 to cap 2 or cap A to cap B is 12 volts at 98 milliamps. Okay, so we have a high current flow from cap A to cap B. But what's happening here is our inductor is consuming so much, our transistor is consuming so much, our cap's probably very little, and the LED is what is consuming most of the power we are using at the moment. Now if we add all up the consumptions it would be equal to our input of 12 volts at 29 milliamps. And how we end up with this from cap 1 to cap 2 is everything that is not being consumed is being sent back to the input via our inductive kickback. So that then reduces the input required from our input side and also adds to the output from this cap. However, the consumption remains the same. So we have a higher current flow from cap A to cap B, but the consumption of the system is our power in. So um, the idea is to work out how to use this extra current between cap A and cap B without it affecting our power input <coughs> and uh, this is where you guys are going to have to use your noggins a little bit <coughs> so that's what we have at the moment um, 12 volts at 98 milliamps 
of current flow from cap A to cap B and our power in of course is 12 volts at 30 milliamps <coughs> excuse me so that'll be it um, until next time we'll uh, see where you end up with what I've given you so far <laughs>